So Sanusi's watching up on the big screen and watching Zay just cook them. And he's like, they can't guard him. He's like, him and Bait Boy, they are about to go crazy. I ain't going to lie. So it's just so fun to watch the teammates watch Zay go off. So Zay does his thing, as we all know. And then towards the end of the half, he comes up to the running backs. So we've got Derrick Henry and Justice Hill. And he's doing his thing. And then this is what Zay says to the running backs. As long as you let me spin, you say, you see zero out there, like, oh, yeah, cool. But y'all about to take over the second half. <laughs> They're like, hell no, this <laughs> can't kill killing us. Hey, bro, hey, every game somebody else cooks. Yeah. It's your turn. All right, so he calls it. He calls it. All of us at home are like, is Zay going to go for like 250? Is Zay going to go for like 300? Like, this is crazy. But then all of a sudden, he didn't have any catches in the second half. But Zay himself called it. Like, he he said in there, he's like, they're going to get tired of me doing this. So he knew that that adjustments were going to come. And if there were no other weapons, you know, then sure, Lamar could have kept force feeding it. But if they're going to adjust their defense and start putting more resources on Zay, Zay knows what that means. He It means it's Derrick Henry time. It's Justice Hill time. So he called it. He's like, y'all are about to take over in the second half. And that was Justice there towards the end being like every game, somebody at yep. difference cooking. That yep. was Justice. Yeah. Yep. And, and man, I mean, was Zay ever cooking? You know, just to revisit week six for him. A, a career game and it was just a first half like you said you know just a first half performance nine receptions 132 receiving yards he was the second highest graded wide receiver across the entire nfl slate in week six according to pff's grading system 90.2 second to just aj brown ahead of some other elite guys on this list like Cortland sutton garrett wilson t higgins to name a few by the way big big brent urban he might be doing a lot of commentary and a lot of uh, uh, cameos during Ravens Wired. He had a batted down ball on Jaden Daniels on Sunday. So good on you, Brent. The OG veteran on that defensive line. But this kind of brings us to part of what Zay Flowers had to say this morning, Sarah. Uh, good morning, football. NFL Network show. And he and Peter Schrager were talking a little bit about this overlooked nature of Baltimore's wide receiver room. And now, as we know, this goes back years historically, given the lack of investment, the lack of true number one wide receivers. Well, the lack have, of a cap investment. They've invested a lot draft-wise. Draft capital-wise. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Certainly made a ton of investments since the Eric DaCosta era began as well. Mm -hmm. Beginning with Hollywood and, gosh, there's been a, a number of them since. Bateman, of course, Zay. Those are three of the several first rounders that Eric has taken a, a, you know, a chance on. And so Peter Schrager talks a little bit about that concept and some of the noise out there of those who are overlooking this wide receiver room. And Zay responded. And, and now you've got likely and you've got Kohler and you've got Derrick Henry in the backfield and Justice Hill. It's always like the receivers are like the last ones mentioned. And yet you guys are having quite a season as well. What's it like inside that room? Maybe not given the national love of other wide receivers and maybe wide receiver groups that you hear about from 31 other teams. I mean, we don't, we don't, I mean, we passionate about it because, you know, it's like a thing going around saying the Ravens receivers, the Ravens don't have receivers and this and that, but y'all don't have Derrick Henry, so. Let me see yeah. what y'all do if y'all got Derrick Henry. The <laughs> so, we got to run the ball because we got him. We always had a good rushing game, so. It's like you always got to balance it out. And if you're rushing game good, you just got to keep going with what you win in you the games. First of all, I know you like that screenshot that I took of that smile. Look at the pearly whites flashing oh, yeah. on NFL Network this morning. But brighten all of our days right now. <laughs> you heard him though, right? He acknowledges it. He says they're passionate about it in terms of why they're overlooked or at least the motivating part of why of, of how they're overlooked. And so – but then he goes in a completely different direction. Yeah. And he's like, wait a second. Y'all don't have Derrick Henry, so let's see what y'all do about Derrick Henry when you got to face him. And he acknowledges that you got to balance it out if you're Todd Munkin. And if your rushing game's good, you just got to keep going with what's winning you games. So pretty much the farthest thing from 
Diva, which is a label that's often attached to the wide receiver position, Sarah, across the NFL. And while, of course, we all want Zay to have one of those signature historical games selfishly for for his sake and for maybe past criticisms about the wide receiver room to, to put those to bed, at least in the here and now, uh, they're winning games. And it seems like internally, the fact that they're winning games in this balanced approach, it's understood. And that's a collective thought through, throughout the offense with how many mouths that need to be fed. Yeah, it's funny because like we were talking about it. I I listened to the interview on on double time. I'm like running around and like uh, you were like, you know, I feel like Zay kind of put a a message out where he kind of put like the the league on notice, right? Where it sends one of those mes- message type things. My takeaway is that like I was surprised by what he said because of what to your point, diva and wide receiver are almost always synonymous, mm-hmm. and so I thought they were like teeing him off to be able to be like, yeah, well the league needs to recognize, right? Like, look what I just did. Look at, look at where I am. Even, even with a a phenomenal number one rushing attack, I'm right outside the top 10. I'm right. So I I thought he was going to do what receivers or most players everywhere do, which is like, yeah, you know, we want to go out and prove them wrong. We know what we can do. And they're going to, they're going to see it sooner and later. Instead he says, yeah, People talk down on us, and while we're passionate about it, we got Derrick Henry. <laughs> you know yep. I mean? Like it was just like he was just like Bobby. His personality is perfect for what the Ravens are structured to do. I mean, Hollywood Brown wanted out, and that could have been mostly, uh, you know, a function of Greg Roman, right? Like that it wasn't just the rushing attack, but it was also, there was like no p- passing concepts that you've got people like, uh, you know, uh, Steve Smith cooking them saying that these are like my, my elementary school son could put together better pass concepts. So maybe it was a combination of the two, but you could not ask for a better personality or a better attitude when you are structured to dominate. And I mean, his in historic ways dominate from a rushing attack. And then you've got these two tight ends and now Charlie Kohler's, you know, coming alive. And so like people are saying, well, this might be the best tight end room in, in all of the NFL. Okay. It's the best rushing attack and attack in all the NFL. So you'd think that Zay would be like, Hey, we're something too. But instead he's like, yeah, people play us down, but we got Derek. Henry. You know what I mean? Yep. Of course he has pride. We know he has pride. I mean, look at the picture. Uh, look at the picture we have flashed up on the screen. This man has so much passion and love for, for football and for his craft and all of that. And so it's like, Zay is not going to, Zay is not the type to be like, I want traded out of here so that I can be featured even more. Like he just is embracing what's going on in Baltimore. And that is exactly what this team needs needs. And you have to absolutely love it as a Ravens fan. He sees the bigger picture. He's coming off a 1,000-yard rookie season. I think he's bound for another one, even if it isn't a pass-first offense. Uh, He's clearly the number one guy in Baltimore. He is a willing blocker when asked. He's a selfless player. We know he's shifty and explosive. The screen game's been really kind to him and Todd Munkin's system so far this year. So sky's the limit for number four. And and to your point, it's kind of a perfect puzzle piece, uh, the type of player he's become. Uh, in year two in the NFL. Let's get to some super chats before sure. some more takeaways from Ravens Wire. Juju Bean says, did you guys see Lamar smiling super hard after he knew he got that first down? That was such a cool moment. And that was from your first takeaway there. Of course, we had audio only, but if you go back and watch the Ravens Wired clip itself on YouTube and across their platforms, I'm sure you'll be able to find that. Was that smile before or after he got knocked by the commanders and then the the uh, little tussle ensued oh yeah yeah oh, at the end there yeah, yeah. <laughs> well i need to, so maybe he can answer that was that before he got hit or was it like while he's smiling he sees he sees the first down marker i don't know just exchanging pleasantries there right before now, actually before heading south Lil x nation says lj and the king shaq and kobe vibes two generational talents on the same team with the will to win it still feels unreal let's go flock nation i like the way you described that lil and Isaiah says, love the darkness fall vibes. We play different. And we're rolling right now. See this? We got, we got our darkness vibes right now. And Rico from BMO could have done, could have been Henry. He was mic'd up in terms of saying who, who said got him. 
We may never know. Until uh, press maybe. conferences later this well, afternoon. Maybe somebody will ask. We don't know. We don't know. What else you got? All right. So the next moment was when, oh, shoot. I want to save that one for last. Here we go. I want to do this one first. Our Darius Washington. Jaden Daniels threw him a gift of a pick. And as you can see from the photo screen grab up on the screen, he tried to catch it with his face mask, which, Bobby, I'm no corner, but I don't think that's the correct technique. And I kind of felt bad for him, but this is the way it is. And it's just it's just the way it is in NFL uh, benches and locker rooms. But his coaches were kind of cooking him a little bit. So Chris Hewitt was the first one to meet him when he came back to the sideline. Because remember, they ended up having to punt. And the punt went all the way down inside the five. Whereas if he had intercepted it, he probably would have put the Ravens, I don't know, at least at the 30, maybe the 40. He, would, he could have had some room to run. So uh, here's Chris Hewitt and John Harbaugh kind of messing with him. Daniels takes the snap. He's under pressure. Scrambling to the right. Has to throw it downfield. It is. Oh, it's a Oh, drop. my goodness. It hit our Darius Washington in the face. That's just a bad place for the ball to hit you, I guess, in the face. Hey, bro. I was hey, bro. Right. Hey, bro. I was falling. What you do? You, you just like panic. I was falling. No, you panic. No, I was trying to get it. Because I was going over the top. Jaden Daniels, under pressure, had his worst throw of the day. It was a punt coming into our Darius Washington, and for some reason, he led with his face mask instead of his hand. Yes, so I was going to help Marlo on the three out of open. The three went vertical, so when I came back, I was stumbling already. Oh, I didn't think I could have gone. Me too. I really, but I thought you could have too. I thought you could have too. Oh, Ravens and They're going to make sure you remember that, our Darius. You're muted there, part yeah, of it. Yeah, yeah. No, he, uh, John Harbaugh was like, I think I could have caught that. And Ardarius is like, I think so too. I think he could have. But basically, what he was saying, no, I wasn't panicking. No, I don't have that terrible of hands. He <laughs> said that he was trying to go over the, over the top to help Marlo on, because they went three vertical, he says. And then when I came back, he was already stumbling. Like he had already been kind of tripped up a little bit. And that's why his face mask went first. So, well, uh, Nate Wiggins had to catch that same type of smoke. Well, but this one, that's true. But on this one, they were not cooking him. I loved this moment. This might have been my favorite outside of that first one. Uh, Nate Wiggins, for real, thought he had a pass breakup to kind of seal the win. Remember, he he jogged all the way into the end zone and was like, Oh, do I remember? Crowd. He was looking at the crowd like this, and he's like, Wait, why aren't they screaming? And then he turns around, and he's like, Oh, there's the yellow flag. So he was pretty, um, you know, down about it. I mean, not terribly down, but he wasn't happy. And Kyle Hamilton, all pro Kyle Hamilton, coaches him up. Fourth and 12, Jaden Daniels throwing deep, near side, Ravens 30. It is incomplete. Oh, the that is, is a down. Interference on Nate Wiggins. And with 2.48 left to play, it is now a one-score Ravens lead. I already know how it's going to be. Just you in good position, bro. Just get your head around. That's all I got here. Work better at getting my head around. Yeah. That's it, bro. Because you're in the hip every time. It's just they're taking so long to get there that, you know, you bound to damn near Yo. touch him. So, like, once his eyes go up and you know it's a fade, get your eyes around. Go pick that. Hell yeah. Yeah, that was a cool moment. Hell yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Like, look, look at the imagery though. Like when Nate Wiggins has his head down, thought yep. he had, thought he made the play, the defensive play of the game, right? Yep. And then there's Zach right on top of him too. Yep, there's Zach right there, and Kyle's and Kyle's like sincere, like he's not condescending. No, he's not like, look at me. You know what I mean? He's like, bro, you're right there. He's like, you're in the hip pocket every single time, and I just love the detail of it. He's like, you know, it's going to take forever to get there, so at some point you're going to accidentally touch him. So if you just turn your head around, you're going to protect yourself and not only protect yourself, but pick it. So, and I love that Nate took it. Cause he's like, yeah, yeah, that's what I got to get better at. I got to, I got to keep working and getting my head around. And my guess is, is somebody has said that once or twice to Brennan Stevens too. Mm. Um, but I loved that moment, Bobby. Hard to believe that Kyle so wise beyond his years. He's not even 24 years old yet. He'll turn 24 in March. This guy's 23 and he's respected universally not just in that building but outside as well 
Hey, let hey. me correct myself too that yeah. Zay Flowers was not a 1,000 yard receiver last year. That was Hollywood's last year in Baltimore. And so yep. Zay went for 858 in his rookie season, but he is bound for one north of, of 1,000 this year for sure. So thank you, live chat, for pointing that out. Good correction there. Just two other, I'm not going to play audio, but I thought this was cool. Steve Bashotti came up to Justice Hill before the game. He said, they're scared of you now. How do you feel about that? <laughs> what a beast. Look right off the yacht. Look at him. Look at him. He's just like, he's just permanently, I mean, he works hard, obviously, but I mean, you don't get to where you are without being smart and working hard, but he just permanently oh, yeah. looks like he's on vacation for sure. He's and a beast. Then, <laughs> and then one other moment that I thought was really cool. Josh Jones out of nowhere. Well, it was like after the Ravens, I think it was one of their 93 yard drives. Josh Jones, who has been serving as the backup tackle. And my theory is that the Ravens are confident, so confident in him that that's why they're letting McCary stay at guard rather than keeping him as, a, uh, you know, the super sub. So, like, out of nowhere, he's like, hey, gets Ronnie's attention. He goes, want to know something? And Ronnie's like, what? He's like, you a dog. <laughs> you a dog. Yeah. I was like, that's. That's cool that he's watching Ronnie and he he knows what he's doing out there. And we've talked about this before. Couldn't be happier for Ronnie Stanley and the bounce back season that he's had. And I've said it before. You're not going to get it on a national level. But when the meet the local media do their awards, they got to give comeback comeback season comeback person of the year to Ronnie Stanley. 